And this is the Kyle Kalinsky uh, interview or discussion with the Vanguard. So you're talking about shit live on top of shit live power, like in one segment. So we're going to try to get through it. I mean, it's not even that long of a clip, but there's yeah, going to be so it. many mo moments where we're going to stop and have to stop. And, and but one thing I'll say to preface this. Down. Go ahead. One th- this is one thing I'll say to preface this real quick, and I'll let, I'll let a lot of video play because this is going to be pretty unsufferable. Um, <laughs> what, RBN <laughs> vindicated once again. What did we tell you guys about Marianne Williamson supporters? What did, we, what did we say? What did we tell you guys about Marianne Williamson, her supporters, and the movement that they was building? And we would consider her. We told you guys that was a Democratic Party sheepdog operation. Mm-hmm. There is zero reason for the working class to get behind Marianne Williamson because the end goal is to turn you into a Democrat. I don't give a fuck what the steps in between are. <laughs> the end goal is to make you a Democrat. So now that Marianne Williamson campaign is dead on arrival, Dr. Cornell West and RFK render her completely irrelevant. So now that the Marianne Wilson campaign dream is dead, what do they revert to? They're Democrats again. They're Biden bros. They skipped the step. Now that Marianne Wilson is out of contention, they skipped the whole campaign shit. They're like, yep, let's go right back to the Democrat shit. Exactly what we told you guys. And I will always take pride that I saved at least a little bit of money. From the world, imagine you're a working class person you donated to this movement, they're going to tell you to vote for Democrats. But anyway, I love I love the video play from there, CJ. All right. So again, this will be hard. It'll be a lot of stops. Just let me know when, Nick. Earlier you mentioned something, um, Gavin, that I thought was really interesting. You were talking about definitely voting for Marianne in the Democratic primary, which obviously I fully agree with. And then you were saying in the general, definitely voting for Cornell West. So yeah. the point that I've made on my show, and the kind of the point that Uh, I've made over the years, even in 2016 and even in uh, 2020, even though some people like interpret what I've said differently, my point has always been, um, if you live in a safe state, I I think you should vote for, you know, the the Green Party candidate or whichever candidate 100 percent aligns more with your values. But I actually think it's a much more difficult moral conundrum in a swing state. I actually don't think it's a very easy question. Like, I'm definitely going to vote for Cornell West, because at the end of the do you guys see how the movement builder strategy from Kyle Kalinske is incoherent? So he says if you live in a safe state, uh, state is it makes sense for you to vote third party. But if you live in a swing state, you shouldn't vote third party. How are you going to get to five percent, which is the goal, if we don't have people voting for swing in swing states? So Kyle Kalinske is saying, oh, you can vote for third party, but we not we don't have an end goal here. We're not trying to hit five percent. We're not trying to get on, the, on the debate stage. We're not trying to do shit. Only only resist the Democratic Party with there are no consequences. How how does that help build our movement? It doesn't. But let's continue. But if, if that's not your goal, if you're if you get what I'm saying, your goal is to is to pretend like you're for that's why you you set up you set up the kids' table. You get what I'm saying? You set up the kids' table. Look, guys, instead of having you guys sit outside on the grass, we have a table for you guys, just like the adults. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh. kids' table. And that's and that's basically what it is. It's to make you believe it's a mirage. You see? you. Where do you want to put all of that energy? Put it right over here as we squash that particular candidate. That's all they want to use it yep. for. But let's get back to the video. There's a lot to get get to here. So, at the end of the day, uh, look, it's just the, the ironclad reality that if we don't get rid of first past the post voting, and if we don't implement ranked choice voting, all the third party talk, whether it's libertarian, green, an independent, or anybody, it's just it all comes to no, like it's literally for nothing. It's all just like a fake virtue signal show. And I actually think that sort of like delegitimizes the idea of a third. So uh, this is the, his new thing that he's been on. I would say for the last. Eight months, maybe this new path first past the post. Because if you go just look literally Google past 12 months of any videos where he's talking about third parties, he never mentions this past first past the post stuff at all. 
So this is this is on a newer, I would say a year. Let me give it him a year. The last year, he's been kind of on this first pass. That's how you know he's adopting and, and liberal vernacular. Right. That's how you know he's adopting the talking point. Because they you mentioned that he started to say this recently, but this is what liberals always say. You see, you, you see how he's he's slowly introducing these terms to try and normalize it among his audiences. But go ahead, CJ. Yeah, and to that point, or you're 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 uh giving a receipts to the point that I'm making, and that is that he, he these are you know whatever whatever obstacle that he puts up that he doesn't think is ever going to be for example they they always thought that saying that they're for third parties would always be a good selling point to the non-establishment viewer and listener as yeah. long as the third party was way out there without a great candidate and now yeah. that they have a candidate they have to create a different sort of a reason and I, and I, to me that's why this kind of sort of fell out of the air and they're kind of really going heavy, heavy, hard at this first uh, past the post voting. But it speaks to the the other part where you were just talking about non-movement building, because then then you're taught you're not talking about you're talking about establishing a third party that is built to win only. And it has nothing other no other reason to be around. And we're talking about no, 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 no. We're using this as a vehicle to build a movement, and that's not their interest. So let's get back to the video now that I, I kind of rambled on. Third party and a candidate who's not a Democrat or Republican a lot more that we all buy into this charade that there might be something serious going on here. Now, this, by the way, is coming from somebody. I voted for Jill Stein in 2012. Um, in 2016, I, of course, voted for Bernie in the primary. And then in the general, I voted for, I think Jill Stein ran again. I think I voted for her again. So I voted for Jill Stein twice. So this is coming from somebody who is literally a Green Party voter. I've probably voted yeah. for more Green Party people than Democrats, or it's like roughly even. Um, but having said that, like, so let me give you my whole spiel on Biden, because I'm from New York. I'm still technically registered to vote in New York, but I might be going to Virginia, which is a little bit more of a swing state. It's not as mm -hmm. safe as New York. So then all of a sudden this conundrum pops up again. So when it comes to Biden, I got to be honest with you guys. I expected Dickie McGee's acts from him. I expected literally nothing because we're talking about a guy. He expected nothing, Nick. Did we get nothing or did we get something? Because this, so he's about to sell us on all this, all the talking points of corporate media. I can't believe this. This is an independent, independent media guy and his talking points on about selling Biden will be the same talking points that exactly. corporate media yeah the corporate media sold us on Biden literally the exact why you guys same. think we do propaganda report we show you guys what the enemy say so you can identify them like we show you guys the MSNBC clip and then Kyle and Chris will say the same fucking thing anyway let's continue who voted for the Iraq war we're talking about a guy who voted for the crime bill and wrote part of the crime bill we're talking about a guy who supported NAFTA and the Patriot Act. And like his his record as a senator is a deeply, deeply conservative Democrat and a corrupt Democrat. So I expected nothing at all. But then when he got into office, like I was genuinely pleasantly surprised to see. Uh, to see what? Yeah. Funding yeah. ICE by more? I think you said $6 billion to see more funding to the police state. What are you surprised to see? To see a march to sending cluster munitions, to sending billions of dollars to Nazis? What exactly is not in line with Senator Joe Biden? That sounds exactly I, I, in line with Senator Joe Biden. Go ahead. I warned people about Joe Biden's record. I warned about the crime bill. I warned about, I warned about his conservative record. I warned that he was a deeply unhinged maniac that sounded like a villain on the Senate floor. So after considering that, I'm not surprised at all because he governed exactly like that. So, so I warned you guys because... He, him sending COVID relief funds to the police, him funding ICE more is exactly in line with his character. Him escalating yeah. World War III and funding Nazis in Ukraine is exactly his character, which is why I brought up the conservative uh, his, his voting record. Right? Anyway, let's continue. Yes. All right. Uh, here we go. He did some student loan debt reduction. He did the $1,400 stimulus checks. He said it was going to be 2000 Student loan. So let's just take it one by one. Student loan reduction. He's talking about the thing that he set up for a house of cards where he put it under the Heroes Act, which is connected to the pandemic. And then he says the pandemic is over and then wonders why the court overturns it. Like it's a joke. So he's giving him credit for that. So 
let's see how many things he give him credit for, and then so, we'll kind of. And, and on that point, just before, before you play it, um, on the Jimmy Dore show, I corrected him. He was lying on the show about how the Democrats don't want to cut Medicaid, even though Joe Biden is literally doing that right now. So you guys see how Kyle Kalinske and the Vanguard's audience, because we covered how the Vanguard purposely misleads their audience, their arguments rely on them misleading you and being factually wrong. Right. So his starting off point, as you mentioned, on the student loan debt is a non-starter because he's factually wrong on the intentions of the Biden administration. So the only way you agree with him is when he lies to you. He li- they were lying to their audience on purpose. Anyway, let's continue. That is a great point, And let's continue. Thousand. That was a lie. But we got 1400, which was half decent in the Inflation Reduction Act. They overruled the Supreme Court. Because the Supreme Court said the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, is not allowed to do environmental protection. And so Biden and the Democrats slipped it into the IRA that we're redefining carbon emissions as a pollutant. So now the EPA can regulate it again, basically saving the entire fight against climate change by that. Saving the entire fight of climate change. Deeply unserious. The same IRA bill that the Black Agenda Report and Margaret Kimberly wrote about how this is no climate bill and it's going to destroy the lives of black and brown people. That's this the same bill. This is fucking dangerous, fam. Like, you guys don't like, think, you guys want to know why we cover? This, he's lying. He's just openly lying to his audience to get people to like war criminals. Who else should we be disputing? We should be disputing MSNBC, CNN as we do. These people are the top people that we should be taking out. This is dangerous, ridiculous, deeply unserious propaganda here. Well, let's continue. Let's play. I had one simple procedural trick, which was super based, one of the most base things I've ever seen any Democrat in the modern era do. He raised the minimum wage for uh, federal employees and federal contractors through executive order, which is about 400,000 workers to $15 an hour. I definitely didn't expect him to do that. I didn't expect him to do project labor agreements, which, uh, you know, 200,000 union workers get higher wages as a result of that. I didn't expect him to onshore 200,000 jobs when Trump had offshored hundreds of thousands of jobs. I didn't expect him to do even the mild gun reform that he did, where we have like some funding for red flag laws and we got rid of the boyfriend loophole. So if you have like a domestic abuser boyfriend that you can legally take their guns now if they're a threat. I didn't expect, you know, Ketanji Brown Jackson, I think is a great Supreme Court justice. He was put on the court. Kanchanji Brown. Bro, Jackson. you know you're running out of shit when you bring up Kanchanji Brown Jackson as some sort of fucking accomplishment. And this has to be said about these things because I've been trying to work a way to get people to understand these mild st- these black milestones are just milestones of white supremacy. It is literally telling you we are still a white supremacy society because we have to celebrate these milestones because we keep black people down so let's celebrate that we have one on court you see how we didn't let this particular one uh uh we didn't push this one particularly down we let her get through up here so celebrate us you see how that is nothing but us just a sort of a comfort confirmation that we are still living in a white white supremacy society because white supremacy would celebrate us them doing something that should be normal. You get what I'm saying? Only white supremacy would celebrate that. Anyway. So I want to say one thing real quick before we continue, um, because you just heard the spill of just a Democratic Party operative. And people say, why are you calling Democratic Party operative? Because the goal of the Democratic Party is to get elected. If your job is to help them get elected, if you're telling people to vote for them, you're an operative. <laughs> like, that's the way it is. And then, so in the beginning, and I don't know why these people do this, as if, as if it's a virtue. It's actually the exact opposite. You know how Kyle Kalinske said, in 2012, in 2016, I voted for the Green Party. As if that supposed to give us plus points towards you. As if we're supposed to have sympathy. You guys know yeah. that that makes it worse, Kyle? <laughs> You realize that makes it worse, right? So we have an analysis where you have people who will fight for justice, be on the right side on issues, and then what happens? They get wealthy. And then once you get wealthy, what interests do you start representing? You start representing the interests of your class. class so you, yeah. Cal, openly in public, which is baffling to me, <laughs> you in public telling how you sell out. 
Oh, I used to be for third parties, but now I'm down for the imperialist capitalist now. Am I, am I good? No, it's the exact opposite. You are explaining how you sold out because you got rich. How is that something you're bragging about? Are you serious? You seriously bragging about that? Be one. Let's, let's, let's continue, CJ. I think to the class that he's aspiring to be, or that he just arrived in, that is, it's it's from their perspective. They may have a different sort of uh, outlook. But let's continue the video so we don't get yeah. too far behind here. Court. Um, you know, we have the NLRB is genuinely pro labor. We wouldn't have seen this this increase in Amazon unionization and Starbucks unionization if it wasn't for that. He pulled out of Afghanistan, which I thought was super based, and then he actually told the media to suck. He's giving him credit for pulling out so Afghanistan we, as he's funding billion dollars to Ukraine. This this is uh, the in lying by omission is a thing. There's a such thing by lying by omission. So if you're talking about Afghanistan with Joe Biden, you got to talk about how Joe Biden seized the funds of Afghanistan to the tunes of billions of dollars, which led to a famine that led to at least 13,000 infants dying. Millions of Afghans are starving because the United States government led by Joe Biden seized their assets. So you don't talk about Afghanistan and give them props on Afghanistan without mentioning the financial genocide that he waged in the state. That is lying by omission. Ma imagine if, 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 uh, imagine if Henry Kissinger, right? did a diplomatic tour of Central America. And someone was like, man, uh, Henry Kissinger is a great guy because he visited Central America. He did some photo ops. And then they don't talk about his war crimes there and how he led a CIA campaign mm -hmm. that slaughtered, slaughtered millions of people, right? So you just talk about his activity in Central America and Latin America without bringing that up. Imagine you talking about George Bush legacy. You're like, you know George Bush actually had an aid foundation in Africa? <laughs> And you don't bring up the Iraq war. That's a giant lie by, by omission. And that is what Kyle Kalinske does. He get praised by pulling, uh, praise for pulling out Afghanistan. Joe Biden destroyed Afghanistan. And he's continuing to do so by seizing their funds. But anyway, let's continue. Great point. The suck is nuts as he did it when they were like flipping <laughs> out over it. And he took a hit in the polls as a result of it because they hit him so yeah. fucking hard on that. And he went down in the polls, but he pulled out and said, no, I'm not going to go back in. Uh, now we can talk about all the, you know, the, the negative things like he's fucking starving Afghanistan right now via sanctions. And, you know, he did a drone strike. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about innocent. it. Um, it didn't lift a finger for the public option or the pro act gave up These are big deals. Mm -hmm. for the whole so, country. I'm serious. And troops is my, I, I like, I could give you. The pros he bring and the cons. us some small bullshit. My... He, he like, I'm gonna get Biden props on some small bullshit, and then he's like, I'm gonna talk about the negative shit he does. And he bring up giant mountain, uh, big <laughs> giant fucking things that he did wrong. He like, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I, I prayed by now pulling out against that, but he only started a million people. <laughs> like what? What? I don't. I'm trying to understand where is he going here. So let's let's listen some more. I'm trying to get what is his point here. But my point here is. <laughs> $15 corporate minimum wage, billions of dollars for made in America green jobs, which was part of the IRA, the PACT Act, which gave health care to toxic burn pit victims who are veterans, uh, massively reducing the drone war. And he did all this stuff without a fucking supermajority. Obama had a supermajority and he did like 40% of what Biden was able to do. So I look at that and I go, my, my purity test in 2020 was like, if I was convinced Joe Biden would just do a couple of the things that I support, just like one or two or maybe three at most, just like if I thought for sure he's going to get me victories on some very three things I like, then I would suck yeah. it up and vote for him. And my point back then was, I don't think he's going to fucking do it. Based on his whole career as a senator, I don't think he's going to do it. I think he's super goddamn conservative. But then that Remember what we say about people who use the term purity test? <laughs> There's not a single person who uses the term purity test who's not a shit list. No fucking person who's right on the issue and, and represent their values will use the term purity test. Like, you either stand for something or you do not. You either care about Medicare for all, Kyle, or you do not. Right now, you're standing for someone who said it will veto Medicare for all, who threw millions of people off their health care. But go ahead, CJ. I know you want to try to miss the world. The, yeah, because, <laughs> because if, if, if you're saying, I didn't know Donald, you know, Joe Biden would govern this way because he didn't. But you just listed off a bunch of things, how he governed, when you say the cons, how he listed the cons, those are all in line with Senator Joe Biden. So their threshold to say he's different 
is that not that he's still doing some of the same shit is that he sprinkles in other different shit on top of it. So like in the IRA bill, the IRA bill, there's, uh, you know, where he, I think that's the one that gives over uh, thousands of, of, of miles of land to uh, possible uh, drilling or something like that in the IRA. That on top of some of the good stuff he does, but if you combine that together, that's a wash. So this is what the professional managerial class does. And you say and you said it earlier, it's lie by omission. You can only say Joe Biden's good is if everything you list, you omit some sort of fact about it. That's the yeah. only way you can have a list. Oh, he pulled out Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. I'll say, yeah, this other thing about <laughs> Afghanistan over here. Yeah, he did this. Yeah, the IRA where he does this. Yeah, the Willow Project. You get what I'm saying? It's everything yeah. you you gotta you gotta act like something else didn't happen in order for you to give him credit for anything. So then the question becomes, Nick, if you know, because he's acknowledging he knows the bad stuff, but you're only giving him credit for the good stuff and not giving him uh a dinging him for the bad stuff, what does that make you but a democratic sheep herder? Isn't that what Democratic sheep herders do? They don't weigh the information against the Democrats. They say that's not worth anything. They only weigh the stuff that's for Democrats. But go ahead. Yep. And you do that when you're not a victim of uh, the crimes of the Democratic Party. When you're not one of the protesters that have been their head cracked, in, uh, their skull cracked in, protecting cop city that Democrats are building, right? When when you're not uh, when you're not a victim of any of these policies like Kyle Clinton, you can only focus on the good because you're just trying to sell a a, a political party. But anyway, let's continue. There's, there, I'm sure there's a lot. Yeah, there's more. a ton. Yeah, there's a ton. Let's let it play a little bit. And now I look at it and I go, number one, I actually probably should have voted for him. I didn't. I actually didn't vote. Jesus in fucking Christ! I kind of should have voted oh, for him. Good number lord. One. Number two, if it comes down to Trump versus Biden or DeSantis versus Biden, you should have voted. For and Biden. I'm in Virginia. I think I would go cast a vote for Biden because. For all my the, the the issues he has, he has far surpassed my expectations. What do you think the Vanguard is doing right now? Do you think they're going, wow, this guy sounds crazy because that's the faces? Or do you saying, wow, this is what we're going to have to start accepting because we're taking isn't orders it from our Kyle. <laughs> we're taking isn't orders from Kyle and, and Crystal now. So now we're going to have to start pushing this nonsense line. Go ahead, Nick. Isn't it fitting that this is their big guess? <laughs> this shit live? This is their big get. This is the guy they say they look up to, which makes sense because Zach is a Biden voter, right? They're cultivating an audience of dumb shit libs, right? And they're not even pulling that off because they don't even get a lot of the followers. They've still been stuck at that same fucking number despite having Kyle Kalinske and them calling their show because no one view them as interesting. So when you do the kind of content that they do, you attract this kind of shit lib, right? This shit lib nonsense because you develop a, a, a unprincipled Dumb, dumb left. That's exactly what they did. And this awkward situation, this fucking guy that they say they look up to sound literally just like fucking any standard MSNBC politician. Just the way you should be embarrassed that you support Marianne Williamson. You should you should be supported. I mean, you should be embarrassed that you ever gave this guy credibility. Because I still remember them talking about, oh my God, I'm so, so sorry that we looked up to Cal. This guy's a shit lib. The fact that you look up to him explain everything about what you guys became. But anyway, let's continue. Let's play it expectations but now it complicates it even more because cornell west is running and i fucking love cornell west and he's way more in alignment with my politics so if i was in new york i probably would still vote for cornell west and not for biden so anyway tell me your thinking and why you're more or less convinced that it's the right thing to do to go cornell west all right gotcha uh a lot to respond there yeah sorry um, about that all, spiel no no you're great that's a that's a lot of good stuff so first of all um, I do live in a safe state. I live in Missouri, which is 100% going to go red. It does every year, um, at least, you know, during my lifetime at one point, not so much. But nowadays, you know, solidly red state. Uh, Joe Biden's not going to win it. In my opinion, it's going to go to the Republicans no matter who I vote for. Um, so I'm going to vote for Cornell West. In the Why is that part of your calculation? Despite acknowledging, and I think it is important for us lefties to acknowledge that yes joe biden is the lesser of two evils and i Why would much rather important? him be president again than donald trump be president again i think it's a, a huge red flag of a faux populist when you start hearing people like jimmy Dore making the argument that actually trump is the lesser of two evils and he's, yeah that is you know, literally a fascist just to be clear that is that is of all the things he said that is by far and away the dumbest shit i've ever Agreed. heard him say 
And Agreed. for Sam Cedar to chime in and say, I'll debate him. I was watching that like, <laughs> if he doesn't want to do it, I'll fucking do it. I'll yeah. do it. Because yeah. that shit is, I, are you like. What, what sort of arguments would you bring to the debate, Kyle, about like, how would you prove that the d- d- Democrats are better? Like, how would you prove? You can only prove it by virtue signaling. You couldn't prove it by anything tangible, no tangible legislation. So I would be curious because this would be this would be a debate a debate where people aren't dealing with the same facts because he would think in his audience and people like the Vanguard they think that this debate is about what they virtue signal about Joe Biden also says healthcare should be a human right but then he also says he would veto medicare for all so what does that mean? Just because he, so, but yeah. that's how they would they would hold it up as look, he at least said this. Yeah, and and to your point about them virtue signaling, they expose themselves, and I'm gonna show you this video while I mention, make this point. They expose themselves as not even really believing in the climate crisis that they claim, right? So I'm if, I'm if you guys care about the climate like you guys claim you do, right? Where did the lesser two evils fit when it comes to the climate crisis? The scientists made recommendations. You either follow the scientists or not. You're not like, oh, he lesser to evil with it. No, you either following the science or not. You either approved the middle project or you did not, right? So these people that say, oh my God, the climate crisis. This is why we don't believe their bullshit no more. Because they're like, the climate crisis is existential. We got to stand up against big oil. But we got to support Joe Biden who approved the Willow Project. How do those fit in? Is it existential <laughs> crisis or is it not? How can you lecture two evils that? How can you lecture two evils war? There's there's very important topics that if you get wrong, you immediately disqualified as a lesser evil. And if you believe in climate change, Noam Chomsky said people who, who, who are complicit with the climate crisis are committing genocide and one of the most evil people on the planet. So how can you square that with endorsing a guy who's complicit with apparently one of the most evil acts that you can commit, destroying the earth? This is why a lot of people stop buying Democratic Party climate bullshit because they don't live their values. They're inconsistent. They don't even want you to make a sacrifice as they endorse people who are horrible for the, the climate. That's why people are skeptical. You are, it's, full, it's bullshit. But anyway, let, let's continue. Do you have any brain cells left to make that argument? Do you, right. Like, that's the thing I don't like. He's a narrative humper and he's a terminal contrarian. So he has his narrative, which is like, actually, Democrats are the bigger evil. And it's like, <laughs> if you follow Joe, the and, news and Eric, at all Eric brings in up modern- here, you guys know that Joe Biden is the biggest eco terrorist in modern human history. And it's literally not an exaggeration to say that because of the Nord Stream pipeline, consider one of the biggest environmental disasters ever. Joe Biden blew it up, but Kyle Kalinske telling you he's a lesser evil, but he's serious about the climate. But anyway, let's continue. No, just, just, let's, let's just, just take some of the things. Let's take climate. Let's take Medicare for all. Let's take, like, anything. Like, so what exactly are you saying the Democrats are better at? Are you saying um, abortion? Do you know how Joe Biden feels about abortion, why he's not putting up a fight? about abortion maybe you should look back at his record on what he feels about abortion like it is it is such a it's it's like in order to believe this nick and for them to sell it it's like having to believe in santa claus it's have it's like talking yourself into believing in santa claus and then going out trying to sell santa claus to adults that's what this feels like it almost feels comical in a sense that it's so ridiculous but let's listen. In modern day, you would know for sure that it's factually false, or you do know that and you're lying because you're a narrative pumper and you're sticking yeah. to your narrative no matter what. So anyway, sorry, I interjected and, here to oh, show no, after pissed off I wasn't and, over that. And by the way, I think it's okay, okay to, uh, to reject the lesser of two evilism idea or that dynamic. If you say, okay, well, obviously Joe Biden is the lesser of two evils, Correct. but yes, I don't want exactly. to participate That's and I'm going to exactly cast right. a protest vote. That's fine, but don't fucking pretend Protest that vote. Trump is the lesser of two evils. That's ridiculous. Um, so, so, yeah, I'll let play. I do live in a safe state, and I would actually take it first. Go ahead if you ain't going to chime in. Remember what I said? Who's, who uses the term protest vote? 
and and lit and uh anyway, let's continue. But who, only, the only people that said that shit live, but you know, let's continue. Yeah. Further than you, Kyle. You said if someone lives in a safe state, then you think it's totally fine to to vote for a third party or green party candidate. I would actually go further than that. I would say if you live in a solidly red or solidly blue state and there's a green party candidate as good as Cornell West on the ballot, then you almost have no excuse not to vote for right, yeah. that candidate, right? Because if you're living in Missouri or California on the you know flip side of that, you can only oppose the Democratic is, is Party when nothing is on the line. <laughs> I'm a deeply serious person who care about movement building. Only oppose the Democrats when they are going to maintain power. That's how you fight capitalism. What does that do, though, Nick? And like going off of their strategy, I would like to ask them the question. What does that do, Kyle? What does that do, Zach? What does that do, Nothing. Gavin? What does it do to vote for Cornell West um, in safe states only? What does that do? I don't understand. Why not just vote for the Democrat? Why go through all these processes of, oh, I'm voting for this and that? Why not just vote for the Democrat from the beginning? Like, why are we doing all this other stuff? I don't I don't. I don't get it, but but let's listen uh, some more. And, and let's be honest about the presidential election. Unless you live in like one of six or seven states, the vote you cast for president is one of the most meaningless things you're ever going to fucking do. And because of the electoral college, it doesn't matter, honestly, unless you live in fucking Georgia, right, at this point. So I think that that's, that's something that needs to be said. And I wish that more people would understand how meaningless their vote for president is, because if more people employed my logic... Um, it's meaningless to vote for president, but these are the same people that's telling you to vote for Marianne Williamson. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they know how bad they are. As they just advocates. through their own argument. I don't understand if they know how terrible they are as advocates. It's so meaningless unless you're in these several states. But meanwhile, go ahead and vote for Marianne Williamson and where his money like. <laughs> Is this an acknowledgement of them saying they're off the Marianne Williamson? They're, this is this is this is like they have no this is Kyle and all of them saying they're off the Marianne Williamson. They've given up on any strategy of that's really going to do anything. This has to be an acknowledgement of that. But let's continue. Of uh, well, if I live in a state that's definitely going to go red or definitely going to go blue, so therefore I might as well just vote for the Green Party. I think if more people realize that, then the Green Party by now would have reached that five percent threshold that is necessary to get federal funding, and that's another reason why I'm very committed to getting Cornell West to five percent. I think that yes, ranked choice voting is massively, massively important, and that we do need to work on making that a reality before you know, third party candidates can truly flourish. But I think almost equally important is getting the Green Party to 5% in a national election. That way they can get federal funding and matching funds. Um, that'll make them a much more formidable uh, yeah. force in the next general election. Um, and also, you know, I think that there is definitely a lot to be said about ranked choice voting. Zach and I are huge advocates of it. Um, and I think it's hugely important for the, the third party movement. But if you do look at some previous examples of third party victories, one that Zach and I have studied is Jesse Ventura's uh, uh, election as a third party governor in Minnesota. Um, it actually was him getting on the debate stage that really made a difference in that. He was far, far behind in the polls, uh, losing to the the Republican Norm Coleman and the Democrat Skip Humphrey, who were much more established politicians in the state of Minnesota. He was like far behind them, um, basically just considered like a joke candidate until there was debates. And then Jesse Ventura, through his ability to contrast his populist perspective with the corporate Democrat and the corporate Republican, it immediately changed basically overnight after that debate. Now, obviously not everyone is a talented and charismatic as Jesse Ventura, but I would argue that Cornell West comes pretty close. And close. if we could get a Ross Perot kind of situation where he is able to, you know, crack 10, 15 percent in a general election poll and get on the debate stage, I think that would be huge. I mean, I think that would be a fucking earthquake. Like so, people would immediately uh, let me, wake up let me and interject. realize this is a, OK, go ahead. Yeah, let me interject because Ross Perot is actually the example I was going to bring up, which is the the example of the most successful independent uh, run for president at the national level. Uh, and he got, I believe the number was, I'm actually trying to look it up right now, but I think, I think the number 18 was 18%. Yeah, I thought it was 19. OK, 18% of it's the vote. It's like 18 and change, but it's not quite 19. But he got zero electoral college votes. And also, it's widely agreed upon among historians that he's like 
the main reason why Bill, oh, Bill Clinton, Clinton won. was able to win, right? So in a weird we way, that sort of makes the resistance liberal argument where it's like, okay, so do you want to hand it over to, to Trump by giving a significant chunk of the vote to a third party candidate who's not going to win and just sort of split? So, so <laughs> Nick, you got, you got the Vanguard boys who are outflanking uh, Kyle Polinsky on his own show uh, because this is Kyle trying to downsell or downplay the point that he just made. He's trying to downplay it like, oh, you really want to do this? So now, Nick, so you have Kyle that went from establishing the Justice Democrats and part of the strategy was building up a third party. He, he went from that Build up Justice Democrats and build up a third party at the same time. He went from that to now he is advocating against third parties. He is advocating against any any other party being in the final general election except for the red or blue because of Trump. Kyle that's says, that's what we're at. Go ahead. Kyle, Kyle said, you don't want to show the establishment that you actually have political power that can influence a campaign, don't you? You don't want to flex the political power of your movement. That would be horrible. But yes, I want to be the reason why Joe Biden loses. That's exactly what we what we want. You deeply unserious clown. If we, as I mentioned on the Jimmy Dore show, if we have a third party movement, that is the ultimate reflection of our power as a working class movement in terms of the electoral process. So if you lose by five percent, we get five percent. We say yes, come get our vote. That is the ultimate flex of political power that we want. Imagine decrying that power. He's saying, oh, my God, you want power? Yes. Are you serious? <laughs> like, I would literally, like, we had a debate. He asked me that question. I was like, you serious? Yes. That is exactly the kind of king-making power that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Anyway, let's continue. The vote of anybody who's center or left of center and just hand all the right wing votes over to one person, because obviously Cornell West is on the left. So he's going to take more in theory from, you know, a Democratic candidate. So, look, my, my point is this. I think we should if you get rid of first past the post voting and you do rank choice voting and you get it tomorrow, I would literally be like a Green Party cheerleader. I would become like an evangelist for them because then like it is then you are by definition, you're serious. Because even whether or not people believe in the idea of a spoiler or they don't, it almost doesn't matter because it's all about the perception of people that there is a spoiler effect, right? And that's real, that people have a perception so of it, even let, if it's true or let, not. Let me burst and so, but if you And there are a lot of duopolists who like the idea of ranked choice voting. I'm not going to help you. You guys know neoliberals are in, in, in elected in states with ranked choice voting? I'm not even for ranked choice voting anymore. I'm for star vote voting. Ranked choice voting is garbage because ranked choice voting is still voting for lesser two evils. Unless yeah. you don't rank someone, which as third party activists, guess what we're going to advocate for? Which burst, burst the bubble of people, duopolis like Kyle. If you don't want to vote for a war criminal, our message as Green Party activists is going to be you rank Dr. Cornel West and you rank no one else. Because doing it the other way showed the flaw of ranked choice voting. And that's why people advocate for star voting right. instead. Because if under ranked choice voting, you're still voting for a war criminal, unless you do it the way I advocate for, where you don't have a second or third point, third choice. So anyway, let's go, let's go ahead. To Eric you. Adams was was elected under ranked choice voting. Do yeah. Dissidents also talks about this. When they broke this down last night, they broke this same thing down, but they do a, a more of a deep dive whiteboard kind of thing where they talk about how ranked choice voting doesn't fix this problem with the red blue team because the red blue team we would just get one of the red and one of the blue team to still win this is what's so this is so stupid um but we don't have to go into that detail but uh, it looked like you were going to chime in and say one more no, thing we, we, can, we can we can continue we can continue gotta, yeah uh, so let's let's continue if you do ranked choice voting get rid of first pass post voting then that's you immediately get rid of any uh, objection to having an independent candidate or a third party candidate. And then I genuinely think overnight, the Green Party becomes more viable. The Libertarian Party becomes more viable. You could come up with some new party. You could run as an independent and that would become more viable. So I guess my frustration is I always it, like in this discussion, everybody always puts the cart before the horse. And I autistically am like, why? But why are Another you putting the cart before the horse? Another important point I have to do make, the, I apologize. Do it the other way. 
Well, I have to make this point because they keep saying, well, we can't support a third party in, until we get ranked choice voting, until we overhaul elections. How do we do that unless we have a third party? Capitalism is give us the power to have yeah. an election system where they're gonna where a third party is gonna win. That we you know what we talk about movement building instead of winning elections because they're gonna rig the game against us. The movement building come first. So you talk about the cart before the horse. The only way you get the accomplishments that we want is by having a third party. You get it? Anyway, let's continue. I I, I need to stop. They they they, they steady want to sell you on. You can use the tools of the establishment to take apart the establishment, which is just a fucking it's joke. It's ridiculous. But that's what he's trying to sell you on. But it's getting harder and harder for him to sell anybody on this nonsense. But let's continue. Another way. And then, like, I'm, I'm there with you. But when you don't do it, it makes me feel like it's sort of delusional in a sense. Well, can I can I take a crack at that one, Kyle? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think that I think that Here's the is, Biden voter to the Biden voter for third right? parties. <laughs> like, I, like that vote for Biden. Maybe. At least Gavin can debate his position because he didn't vote third party. But this guy's a Biden voter. Get the fuck out of here. Maybe we'll continue. <laughs> You have a different experience. I wonder if it's a, a little bit, if, if more people are plugged in in the D.C. area. But I feel like the reason that a lot of people put so much pressure on the uh, every, you know, the four year cycle, I mean, of presidency is it's because that's when you get people's eye on the ball, you know. And, and I, I do understand that you're playing with fire when you're dealing with a third party candidate and you're facing a guy like Donald Trump. But I, I think that the worry is, is that it would be infinitely more difficult because of how stressed out everybody is because of how spread thin everybody is and because the media machine already trains everybody and is incentivized to keep their eyes on the horse race uh because that's a profitable mechanism i think a lot of people just uh feel like it can be harnessed uh to get a third party off of the ground in a way that it might not be able to be harnessed to get something like ring choice voting off the ground uh and i think that the you know uh, as a youtuber obviously we're completely jaded right but if you look at our, that's why you, you know, vote for Biden. Like Gavin, one time he spent like I don't know, a twelve hours in his room cutting this like, you know, super in depth like video essay about why ranked choice voting in Maine was super important and everybody should take a look at it because this was like twenty twenty. It was a hot button issue, uh, and it got like eighty six views. Uh, you know, you start making clips about you know the horse race, electoral politics, uh, you get a lot more engagement. So I just think that's why people, uh, you know, decide to put the cart before the horse is because otherwise, you know, that horse might not move. So I also just think people I, I are just sick say, and tired of waiting. But okay, that's Biden more of voter. A, I, I mean, I hear you, but that's more like the point that I'm making to do those things. It's more of like a procedural and administrative type argument, not that it needs to be this big public show. We're gonna get ranked. Choice. So. So the Vanguard, Nick, is here to try to pull Kyle Kalinske to the left. Uh, That's what's happening. They're trying to save the him. Vanguard. <laughs> the Vanguard is here trying to pull him to the left. And they keep playing these devil advocates. And then he comes in and says, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you why that's nonsense. Let me tell you why I'm more of a shit lib than you think. Yeah. And if you don't think the Vanguard is going to take lessons and take notes here, and then all of a sudden they're going to be speaking in this manner if they're not already doing so. But this is the professional managerial class media. This is the Bernie Sanders industrial complex media. This is it, Nick. This is so important why RBN has came in at the point that it came in. Because if there was zero voices or not as many voices or at least a black voice saying what we're saying about what this like think about the think about there be no pushback against David Sirota be no pushback against Marianne Williamson be no pushback against going through this same process of going through the Democratic Party again it'll just be this nonsensical these conversations where nobody's challenging this shit and everybody just kind of go well Kyle said it and he kind of explained it, and okay, so he explained the same thing about yeah, the freaking Justice Democrats and said we should we have to build up a third party with logic. And we this suppose, is his whole thing. Go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. People say, Why you guys always go after these people? Cause we expose how fucking ridiculous they are. 
Like before the era of RBN, the, Cal Kalinske and Sam Cedar and these people go on these unhinged shit live rants, and no one will call him out because of uh, civility politics. Oh yeah, I know. I know he leading the workers off a cliff over there. I know he he cultivating a dumb dumb left audience, but I can't call him out because that would be rude. Well, here comes RBN who never really cared about making friends with them anyway. <laughs> 